welcome back from the letters I receive. It sounds like a lot of people in Europe and actually around the world still use the Mannlicher Schönauer rifles and then the Steyr Mannlicher rifles that replaced them. And there were a bunch of questions that arose from those letters. So I thought maybe I'll make a video that's a little bit disjointed, but would answer some of those questions just because I happen to have uh, all of the guns that people were asking questions about. So what I did is I took apart <clears throat> the, um, the, the uh, Steyr Mannlicher and you can see, um, in case you're not familiar with these Mannlicher designed gun, uh, rifles, actions, that the bridge in the back is split. Um, this is in contrast to the Mauser 98, so if you can kind of lock that image in your mind, the front receiver ring is smaller than a Mauser. The rear receiver ring is split. This small button releases the rotary, the cartridges from the rotary magazine, which we'll look at in a moment. And you can see how complex this action was to make. It's a deep forging, and then a lot of machining. Everything on it is properly hardened, and the bolt release is on the left side. Some people say they're very similar to Mausers. I suppose in some ways they are. And here's the Mauser 98. This, this is actually not a Mauser 98. This is a Siemens Mauser, but it's the same concept. You can see the, the receiver ring in the front is solid, and the receiver ring in the back is also solid, and that's the bolt release on the Mauser. The Mauser trigger, and there's the Mannlicher trigger. And again, the original 98, um, as we've discussed many times, hard to beat. Here's the recoil lug on the Shire. And this is the Mauser 98 bolt, which you can see has the two locking lugs in the front and the long extractor for controlled round feed on the right side. And then the um, safety lug is here. And the bolt handle also locks into the back of the action um, in, differently on different models. But anyhow, and here's the um, uh, Steyr Mannlicher bolt. And you can see the bolt lugs, locking lugs on the front. And a different smaller extraction and an eject ejection system. And because of the split bridge, the... Um, bolt handle is a little bit forward. This is all familiar to most of you, but maybe not all of you. So it puts your hand in a slightly different position regarding the trigger. But I still think that this Mannlicher system, the Steyr Mannlicher and the um, rifles that we'll look at, the Model L, the Model S, and the Model M that replaced the original Mannlicher Schenauers uh, are extraordinary rifles. Anyway, so I hope I kept all the terminology cor correct, but um, the, the basic idea was to compare the two actions. And you can see there are similarities, but there are significant differences. And the people that like the original Mannlicher Schenauer and these uh, Steyers they like the rotary magazine, and so I took it out. So this is how it works. As you put the cartridges in, this rotates. Now, this is uh, machined for a specific cartridge. So a lot of them, let's say the 1903 model, was made for 6.5 by 54. Uh, not too far different from 6.5 by 55, and the, none of them are all that different from the, the popular Creedmoor round. Anyway, I guess the idea was to have absolutely certain feeding and they accomplished that way back when with that magazine and um, that sits in the bottom of the action. This is the completely assembled rifle. So you can see that's where the magazine is. You push this in, rotate that plate and I took it apart first so you can see that and then the whole magazine is removable. Uh, but again, it's machined for a specific cartridge, so you can't switch these around as easily as you can with a Mauser, because the Mauser will feed, generally speaking, 
a 30 out 6 or a 270 or a 280. Not this particular one. This is designed for a rimmed cartridge. That's why the box magazine is slanted, but that's another story. So the Mauser 98 is more versatile. Uh, people ask me which one is better. Uh, well, as a sporting rifle, um, it's hard to beat the Mauser 98, but the the original Mannlicher Schirnauer, sure this is a 1930 action, but they were made as of 1903 and probably earlier. Same concept with the magazine, same rotary magazine here, and then to release the cartridges you open the bolt, push that button, and a very simple um, and effective trigger and you know how I, I like simple and effective mechanisms. Anyway, these Rifles, um, this one is labeled Steyr Daimler Puch and uh, made in Austria. Just beautifully made and finished. I always recommend that people buy them if you see them at a, at a reasonable price. Now, maybe this is a little bit unusual um, for some people, but I never had difficulty with it. And I think tens of thousands of hunters can't be wrong. Different scope mounting systems were developed. This one I don't like. Um, actually, I don't like any of the turn-in systems just because they're, these, theoretically, you turn them out and take the scope off and then put them back on tight and the screws and it's in the same zero. But uh, these screws change windage. So um, actually, I knew a fellow that patented the coolest thing, a replacement for these screws on all the Redfields and Leopold systems like this so that they locked in the setting, but I haven't seen it come to market. Uh, some of them have single triggers, some have double triggers. Uh, the one I took apart is, I think, a double trigger. No, it's a single as well. Anyhow, scope mounting is a little tricky because of that um, split rear bridge, so you have to put the rear scope mount on the back, but it's not all that complicated. And my favorite mount for these, if you get one, I'll get one of these rifles is um, um, the, the Aka mount from Germany. Um, they, they, um, they're quick removable, easy to install, and beautifully machined. They're not inexpensive, I forget, maybe three or four hundred dollars, which is a lot for a scope mount. Um, anyhow, so these became too expensive to manufacture, and if you take one apart like I just did, you can see why the magazine alone, I mean, that's it's a lot of work to build it and to assemble it. And the trigger guard is all steel. The components are, yeah, just really expensive to make. So then they abandoned this model with the split bridge, but they sort of wanted to um, preserve the, I guess, the concept of the rifle. So they came up with these. These are now discontinued, uh, I believe. The most modern, product is similar but it's not the same but it has um, a rotary magazine it's it's also extremely reliable actually I've never seen one fail but it is plastic and some people don't like that and they have a little image of a deer and it says 243 this is the um, L model so it's smaller than this model which is the S um, I have the other scope ring I just didn't put it on for filming. And this is this this rifle here is in 6.5 by 68. And after you have a look at the video, you could uh, look up the 6.5 by 68. It's one of the fastest 6.5 cartridges based on the 8 by 68. And those rounds are quite old German rounds. And just now people are taking an interest. I think there's a 6.5 by 300 Weatherby. Somebody was writing me that the Vanguard's now available in that caliber, which is kind of interesting. Um, 6.5 by 68 uh, ammo, as far as I know, I, I always have to buy RWS, which is not inexpensive. But getting back to the uh, reincarnation of the original Shire, so they put the locking lugs at the, at the rear, and we've actually looked at these in prior videos, or at least one but just because I have them on the table. So they preserve the rotary magazine. You can see the receiver is going to be quite rigid because the ejection port is fairly small. Locking lugs at the rear mean 
that the action is exceptionally smooth. And again, the finish and workmanship on these is first class. I like the small action, the Model L, and I'm not sure if it'll show up very well, but you can see that they leave the hammer forging marks on the barrel. There's, there's a pattern. They're not the only manufacturer that did that, but they're probably the best known manufacturer. Just a superb rifle. So the questions were uh, regarding the split bridge. So now we've seen that the Mauser 98 does not have a split rear bridge and the, um, the Steyr Mannlicher and the Mannlicher Schnauer do have the split bridge. The rotary magazine, the exceptional workmanship, um, it, it's very you know, hard to be categorical with guns because custom guns, especially based on any of these actions, can be extraordinary and factors such as stock design come into play. But I've always thought of these as, in terms of workmanship, the, probably the best made factory sporter. And um, some people don't like the polymer parts, which were kind of groundbreaking. This has the double set trigger. So does the 6.5 by 68, which is a much more massive action. It's actually hard to tell you all the things that I want to share with you, but there you can see the, the difference in action size. I hope that's evident. They're really big. And I have this Model S in 458 Winchester Magnum, which is a, actually it's a lot of fun shooting that 458. Just another great rifle. Anyway, I hope that answered your questions. I probably missed something because I usually do. Please feel free to write me again. A little bit of a disorganized video, but the bottom line is because people are collecting or starting to collect, any of these Austrian rifles are fantastically made. I don't know whether it's the influence of Fairlock or they have a long history of, of making firearms. And there are other channels that go into a lot better detail than I can offer, but, but I, I have the guns, so I thought I'll share them with you, then you can see them all on the table at one time. Um, and I guess I'll close with this 30.6, which is kind of interesting. It has the typical safety on the bolt, and I don't know if one of you knows, maybe is this a standard feature? It's a Tang safety, and I was just running it before filming. It's completely silent, beautifully fitted. Anyway, if one of you knows whether that was a factory feature, it'd be cool. And I take these sights off. I take these scope mounts off. They don't allow me to use iron sights, and I don't think that's a great thing. I don't see why it's a, what's the point of having iron sights if you take the scope off, you still can't see. No, I can't see anything, so that doesn't make much sense to me. And I think the other one is, you know, it's just the same. Um, anyway, I've got a few of each of these. Be happy to answer any other questions. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe and support me on Patreon. And we'll see you on the next video.